Second Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year C. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding was all finished, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said, Woman, why turn to me? My hour has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. There were six stone water jars standing there meant for the ablutions that are customary among the Jews. Each could hold 20 or 30 gallons. Fill the jars with water, Jesus said to the servants, and they filled them to the brim. Draw some out now, he told them, and take it to the steward. They did this. The steward tasted the water and it had turned into wine. Having no idea where it came from, only the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said, People generally serve the best wine first and keep the cheaper sort to the guests of it plenty to drink, but you have kept the best wine till now. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. It was given at Cana in Galilee. He let his glory be seen, and the disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week we saw how baptism is a key sacrament. But a part of me says that a good Christian marriage should be on a par with it. If the marriage is celebrated between spouses who have faith in God and it takes place in the church, then there's a good chance that their children will be baptized in the church as well and follow in the footsteps of their parents. I think it's very interesting to notice that today's gospel, from today's gospel, that Jesus performed his very first miracle at a wedding breakfast. This is an indication of the high esteem in which he held it. The Catholic Church also places marriage high on its agenda. It's included as one of the seven sacraments. Marriage is a very significant moment in a person's life and it's not to be taken lightly. Just as Jesus laid down his life for his bride, the church, on the cross, so metaphorically speaking, married couples are asked to lay down their lives for each other and the priest is also asked to lay down his life for his people. But for that to happen, husband and wife need to understand what laying down their lives for each other means. Now I often say to engaged couples that some people marry at the church but others marry in the church and there's a difference between the two. At the church means that more attention is paid to the kind of building the wedding is to take place rather than being a committed member of that self-same church. In the church, on the other hand, means that the couple are already members of the believing community and their marriage is an extension of their faith. That same faith which they believe will sustain them throughout their married life. When a couple come to Mass, their love for each other will be conformed more and more into the likeness of Christ's love who laid down his life for all of us. The couple in today's Gospel had Jesus and Mary top of their invited lists, guests. If Jesus and Mary have pride of place in the life of a couple, then despite setbacks, all will turn out well as it did for that very fortunate couple at Cana. Much to their delight, Jesus turned out not only a small amount of wine into the very best, but a huge amount of it. 
Six stone water jars. Now that's quite a bit of drinking. The conclusion we can draw from this that if we if he is close to the spouses, the strains and stresses of family life won't get them down, but will be opportunities even for greater closeness as a couple. They will not be tempted to give up at the least hurdle. We hear a lot these days about alternative family setups and those who ditch marriage altogether. If this happens, unlike the couple at Cana, we keep Jesus and Mary at bay because this way of life contravenes the inherent nature of conjugal love. A fundamental ingredient of married love is the lifelong commitment a man and woman publicly make to each other and to God on their wedding day. And every time they come to Mass, they renew that covenant. At the end of the Gospel today, it says, Jesus let his glory be seen, and the disciples believed in him. Society today, more than ever, needs spouses to let the beauty of their married love to be seen, so that those contemplating marriage may be inspired to follow in their footsteps. Thank you all for listening, and God bless you all.